Let's see, and welcome to Interview Impossible. Today I have a very exciting guest from Australia. Uh, her name is Melanie Perkins, and she's CEO and founder of Canva.com. Melanie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me, Heather. Well, I'm obsessed with your tool. Um, I, I, I spent some of my formative years uh, learning Photoshop and all those fancy uh, uh, tools, and you know, as I get older and as I run my business, I have less and less time on my hands. So I am thrilled to introduce your product. I, I evangelize your product with all of my students. I have a, a program called Findability University, and people go crazy for your tool, Melanie. They feel so brilliant and so creative. So can you tell me a little bit about what was the genesis for Canva, and how has it come to you know, what it is today? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, the idea for Canva actually came about over seven years ago. I was at university and I was teaching people how to use things like Photoshop and InDesign. And they were so complex to use and difficult to learn. So I realized that in the future, design would be entirely different. It would all be online and collaborative and really simple. So that was really where the, the idea for Canva came about. But that was over seven years ago. And so I started my first company with my co-founder, Chris Obrecht. Um, and we made an online design system for the school yearbook market. So we wanted to make design for the school yearbooks really easy. And so that became the largest yearbook company in Australia and launched from France and New Zealand. But we always knew that that technology was much more powerful than the school yearbook market. And so a few years ago, we started on the journey to Canva. And we've been in development now for two and a half years. That we've been launched for one year. Um, and we, we launched that, we've now got an incredible team here and we have a new co-founder, Cameron Adams. And that um, has now, in the first year, we just celebrated our one year anniversary um, just, a, just a couple of weeks ago and we've now hit 750,000 users who've created over 5 million designs. So it's been going absolutely crazy. Well, that is quite an accomplishment. And, and, and how old is Canva? When was it first created? Um, so, so it was founded in 2012. The idea came about seven years ago. So um, it depends where you want to measure it from. Was it written on a napkin at a bar and started from there, or how did it how did it originally get started? <laughs> uh, I think there was some late night scrolling on paper frantically. <laughs> was was one of the initial in, uh, iterations of it, um, and then. Yeah, from there it sort of grew and grew and grew into what it is today. But it's, it's only been launched out in the wild for one year. Wow, that's pretty incredible, the growth that you had. What do you attribute, yeah. these, what do you tr attribute to massive success? What makes this tool so special in your mind? I think just that it solves a really significant problem for people. A lot of people struggle with creating designs, whether they're a small business or a blogger or just trying to put together a presentation. Like, in every single field, there's actually um, strong need to create beautiful visual content. And so Canva really meets those needs. I think solving a problem is one of the most fundamental things you can do as a company because if you solve a problem, you'll be able to find customers who want to use it and pay for it and all of the rest of that. Right. And, you know, and in managing uh, even just for images for blogs, images for websites, even images for social, you know, having that impactful visual that is done well without having a design team in house, it, it can be very expensive. Um, and maybe you can walk us through some of the, um, you know, some of the basics of Canva and then tell me sort of some of the things you really, there's a number of sort of great image tools on the web. And I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if you could maybe show us a little bit of the basics and then kind of some of the really unique tools that make separate Canva from some of the other image creation tools on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the biggest things about Canva, like when, because when I was teaching the design programs, it was so complex. It would take a whole semester for people just to learn where all the buttons were on, on this interface. When we wanted to launch Canva, we wanted to be the exact opposite of that. So when you right. log in, you get this 23 second guide. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Screen right. So you get this 23 second guide and it runs you through the basics of how to use it. So all you have to do is search, drag and publish. So if you click show me how it's done, this is what you get when you first log in. You get this very, very simple tool, tour. 
So you search for a lion, search the library of over a million images, drag it on the page, you can resize it, it add some text on, you can choose from a simple text holder or a more beautiful one, and then you can click download and you can download it as an image or as a PDF. Mm -hmm. And so the whole objective is that it's very simple. It's like you should be able to take your idea and turn that into design and have as little friction as possible between those two points. And then the next thing um, when you came in, when you come into Canva, we found that people were really scared of their own abilities. They thought, I can't design, they you know, may have used another program before and thought that they didn't actually have that capacity. And so we wanted to take people um, through these starter challenges to help to build up their confidence. So you come and says, click on the circle to change it to your favorite color. And you do mm -hmm. exactly what you expect, you click on the circle. And then you can choose a color from the color wheel or you can choose one from um, the actual color palette itself. Um, search for a hat and put it on this monkey. So you can come over here and search for a hat. And drag it directly onto the monkey. Definitely works um, with the pirate so, theme, I think. Very nice. I, I like the pirate theme. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, yeah, it was supposed to be a little bit funny, like, we wanted to build up people's confidence, make it, them feel like it's a place where they can actually have fun and play rather than be scared. Um, well, also, the they're down. having fun, too, doing it, you know? It's not so yeah, arduous. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it comes background, and so you can choose a plain background color um, from here, or you can choose a background down here by dragging it on. Search your favorite food and drag it into the frame below. So let's search for sushi. You can literally just drag it into the placeholder and it replaces it and crops it and does all that sort of thing. And then you've got filters that you can use. You've got all of the tools built in, so it's really, really helpful. For, like you can go to grayscale or you can go festive, which brings out the colors. You've got all of these different sliders. You can change the brightness and make it darker. You can change right. the contrast. Um, you can even blur the image, which can look really beautiful in the background. So you've got all of the controls there. And then you've also got layouts. So you can come over here and just drag a layout directly on. So you, you know, it's a really great starting point. So you can replace all the images. You can change the text and filters. Like you've got the entire design controls all within, within Canva. So that's, that's the starter challenges, and that's the um, entire process. But I think what's really fun is we've got these um, different design types that you can choose from. You can choose a social media graphic or a presentation graphic or a Facebook cover. You can scroll over here and we've got Pinterest graphics and Google Plus covers and Twitter headers. So you can literally just click on the design type that you want to just click on Pinterest. And then you've got layouts that are perfectly suited to that design type. So I can drag the layout directly onto my page and then I can change any aspect of it that I want. So um, that whole process is, is really simple. Well, I think it really starts to, you know, we, we talk all about how, you know, Google Images, the number two people, way people use Google. And I think it's important for us to think about the power of images and, and how in such a time-starved, Society, you know, we make really fast, quick decisions based on visuals. And I think that yeah. even historically, I mean, I've, I've owned my business for a long time and I've outsourced on Elance and Fiverr and all these different sites trying to get web designers or graphic artists to create these very simple images. And it can be incredibly expensive to go through a third party. And I remember when I found your tool, although I, I, I have a graphic arts background, it just was so simple and made it look so beautiful and mm. fast. And that was really, I think, why I show it to all of my students and I show it in all my presentations is just it's so elegant. How do you how did you distill down something that's so complex into something that's so simple and easy? And you're you're more or less taking the functionality of Photoshop or Adobe InDesign and you're making it into something so elegantly simple. What was that process like for, for your team? Yeah, I, um, I think that one of the key things, so seven years ago when we first built a, a, our very, very rudimentary version, 
um, we I then wrote an instruction manual on how to use it, and it was so one, go to like click this button to click this button to go to the background tab. Two, click this button to do this. And even though it was much simpler than the the previous um, application, um, it was still there was a few steps that needed to be done. And so after writing the instruction manual to go with my very simple to use online design platform, I realised that rather than having an instruction manual, every every single action should be one or two clicks away. And so we really tried to build that into Canva to make everything as obvious as possible. Nothing should have an instruction manual. And that's become foundational to what we wanted to do at Canva, which was to build the into all of the professional design tools, so stock photography and illustrations and backgrounds and beautiful fonts. And layouts. We wanted to take that entire design ecosystem of tools and assets that you can use and put that into one platform. But we wanted to make it very simple. And so um, it's just taken a, a very long time to, to process and distill all of that complexity down to something that's simple. But I think the guiding principle has been that everything should just be one or two clicks away. So if you want a background, you come and click the background tab and you can just right. choose the background that you want by just dragging it on. Um, if you want a layout, you can just drag a layout directly onto the page. So that's been a really strong guiding principle throughout mm. the process. And then just iterating and iterating. Um, we spend you know, every time we're talking about a button, we you know we'll have sometimes days and weeks in deciding where that button should go, where is the most logical place for it. Um, it's a, it's an ongoing process of trying to make things as simple as possible, so that people don't have to learn. Um, I think that's another foundational concept for us has been um, we, we people shouldn't have to learn our tool. Our tool should do what people naturally want to do. So another little example, when we first had um, our system, people would um, we wanted people to drag the, the layout directly onto the pages. But we saw some people wanted to click on the layout. And so rather than being like, you should learn to drag, you can literally just click on the layout and it'll apply. <laughs> So you were thinking about both ways in which people would engage with that, not just one or the other. Exactly. We, so we watch people use Canva a lot and we see the way that they think about it. If they kind of click on a button and they expect it to do a certain thing, then we want to make sure that that button does what they would expect it to do. So everything is just as obvious and straightforward as possible. So I get a lot of questions from my university and my t um, event attendees about copyright, licensing, images. Why mm -hmm. can't I just grab an image off of Google Images? Why can't I just search Flickr and grab an image? And can you help me just to explain sort of how Canva approaches images and, and what's the best advice you could give in regard to foraging for, for images that you're allowed to legally use? Yeah, sure. So with images, firstly, you don't, definitely don't want to be opening yourself up to being sued down the track. So I imagine being in court is probably one of the worst ways to spend your business hours. Um, but we we actually saw a very similar problem. So people you know, want to have new images every day for social media or for their blog, sometimes several times a day. And a lot of people can't afford to you know, spend $10, 50 per image. And so what we want to do with Canva was to make it really affordable to um, use different images all the time without having to break the bank. And so with Canva, we've introduced a new license type, which is called a one-time use license. And so you pay $1 for an image to be used in a single design. And so that means like when it costs $1, it becomes a no-brainer. It's like you can use a proper um, license image for a dollar in your social media graphic or your blog post or your presentation. And so it becomes very affordable to actually um, legitimately license images. So I, I think that the price point makes it a lot easier to stay inside the lines of the law. So you have a certain amount of images that are free and then you have a certain amount of images then that go into a pricing model, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So um, for example, we've got a whole bunch of text placeholders that are all free and all sorts of other images. You can see this, uh, let me search for a Beach. And so you've got all these beautiful phrases of beaches. And if you roll your mouse over it, you can see they cost $1. So I can drag that into my design. It'll automatically blur because it's a blurred image. But then when I want to actually download this image, it costs me $1. So 
Um, and so you can see it's got a little crosshatch watermark. So I'll remove the blur so you can see that a little more clearly. Um, so you can see that the Canva watermark on that was a little crosshatch. And so when I download that image, it costs um, one dollar. And so what we actually do, rather than having to, the normal process is you go and purchase an image and then you put it in a design and then you decide, oh, that image didn't quite fit. But with Canva, you can actually choose the image. So you can search for our library, choose the image that you want, create your design, and it's only when you want to actually purchase the design, you're like, this is 100% good to go, that you pay, then pay $1 for that image. Well, I just I, I love the idea too, is where you're, where you're able to upload your own images and really put some personalization to them too. I think some of the questions I've got about your tool is, well, what if everyone's using that same image? And I said, well, there's an infinite amount of varieties using that same image. But I <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this, uh, Melanie or not, but sometimes you go from site to site to site and you see the same customer service person, or you see the same. Uh, images over and over again on different websites and I think that you know having an understanding of how to personalize these images uh, is just critical to good to good design uh, what are some of the ways in which you see people using Canva um, I know you probably have some heavy users um, what do you yeah. think are the most popular I mean, you have a lot of selections there of things that people do but what do you find is the most predominant way people are using and creating content on Canva yeah, so people use Canva for all sorts of things. It actually really surprises me by the, the breadth of what people use Canva for around the world. Um, but everything from presentations, we find that we've really taken off with bloggers and people have to create social media content. Um, they have to create blog graphics all the time. And so right. coming into Canva just makes that process much more simple. Um, so small businesses who are trying to create their marketing materials um, we've launched real estate flyers and that has been going absolutely crazy. So real estate agents who want, are wanting to create flyers um, on social media or flyers to actually hand out. But I, I, the two key markets so far have been bloggers and social media content creators. Um, I think having a daily need to create designs all the time is, mm -hmm. has been very powerful to have for a tool like Canva. It's an amazing resource. I especially like so like for like the, the Google Plus covers, the Facebook covers. You know, I think it's um, it, it very interesting to me how difficult it is uh, on your own to create a graphic that meets those specific requirements. And I was particularly excited when I saw those for my students because I'm like, that makes it a no-brainer to go in and keep changing those. I change my graphics on my social media sites every single month. Um, I think a lot of people don't tend to think about freshness. So from a content marketing standpoint, how have you seen um, marketers using Canva? Um, or do you have any best practices, guides, or, or tutorials, or things that you provide to help sort of build a business owner's, um, you know, uh, understanding of, of how to do good marketing because you could certainly even with the best of tools Melanie you can make a horrible looking graphic so <laughs> I'm just wondering <laughs> so I'm yeah. just wondering what do you have from a resource standpoint on here so when you sign up for Canva every week you'll be sent a new design tutorial which will take you through a different aspect of how to design from you know, learning about how to match colors and choose fonts and create beautiful backgrounds what I'm going to do is I'll show you one thing that I think is very cool. It's about how to create templates inside Canva. So I'm going to choose Facebook posts. You can do this for any network that you want. And so say you create a beautiful graphic. So let's come here and choose. Um, you can scroll through these layouts forever. Um, let's I know. This one. <laughs> and so what you could actually do is you know, choose your own font, choose your own. Um, and create your own template. And then every single week, so you could actually put in an inspirational quote or a tip. So say you uh, wear, obviously, a design company, and so we do design tips every week and creativity tips and font pairings and color palettes. Um, but you can actually set up a template and you set all the fonts that you want to be exactly the way you want it. And then you can actually just replace the image each week. So say you're a, a we really like to search beach. <laughs> so, um, they are a beachy company. You can then just 
do a different graphic every week, um, leave the images in the same spot and um, keep the fonts in the same spot. So let me demonstrate. So yeah, I'm going to crop this image down here and then wow. I can duplicate the page and it will keep all of everything in the exact same spot. And so that means that I can replace the text with a new quote every week, um, but keep everything nice and consistent, which is a really nice effect. So I could do it this way by changing the image and the text every week, or I could even do something like changing the tint every week. So I might do a blue image one week, and then I could duplicate the page and do a, make it more green. And so you, you do this in a very cool way. So building up a consistent template with the fonts that you want and then just changing the image and text every week will help you to really help um, build a strong brand. So for example, I'll show you these design challenges that we created earlier. So these haven't yet been released. But you can see what I've done is set up a template um, and then I change the text on each of them. So create a design showing a recipe you love. Create a design using photos from when you were a kid. And I'm just changing nice. the tint every for each of the designs. So it makes it really easy to create beautiful content by just changing um, one aspect of the design. So it could be changing the image or it could be changing the um, text itself. Um, doing tips for your target demographic is a really easy way to create great content. Well, and I, I love the, the idea of being able to, you know, create one image and then almost create a series. So we encourage yeah. clients to do like a content calendar and then each, like you have Monday Madness and Techie Tuesdays and, you know, Funky yeah. Fridays or whatever. And, you know, stick to a theme that your followers can start to depend on. And, you know, they get those visual cues from those images and being able to load them up. And, and mm -hmm. one thing I think is incredibly helpful, and maybe you could talk a little bit about this, is when I download those images, now you give me a URL. Does that URL last forever, or is it better for me to download it and re-upload it to my systems versus using the URL? Um, that URL lasts forever, so you can download. So you can do it a whole multitude of things. You can um, share the image on Facebook or Twitter. You can also download the image as an as an image or as a PDF, or you can um, actually share the link itself. Um, so you can do any of those things. Something else I'll show you, which is kind of cool. If, so this is a Facebook post um, where I put in a different marketing inspiration quote um, on each of the pages. But because I've done it as one page, as, as one design, I can then actually um, download this as a PDF and then upload it to SlideShare as well. So it means that not only is this great content to be posting every single week or even every day, then I've actually got a slide share that I can share and embed in other things as well. It's wonderful. It just makes it so easy. And these are, I mean, these are agency quality graphics. I mean, they're really beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Well, I noticed you have a new Canva button. Uh, what's that all about? How, how does that work? Yeah, so that is for um, a, a lot of companies are embedding the Canva button into their site. So this is, um, Companies like that have e-commerce platforms and uh, social media analytics tools and a whole bunch of really cool companies that want to enable their users to design in a much more easy fashion. Um, so when you go into a um, e-commerce store at the moment, if you might want to design your social media header um, or your your store banner, and so with Canva you can now click the button and Canva pops up, and then their users can actually create their um, their store banner very, very quickly and it pops directly back. So we're trying to get Canva into the hands of people that need it the most. And often when people are setting up things like an e-commerce store, um, it's perfect for them to be able to do that through, through other platforms. Now is that something anyone can use the Canva button or is it just on limited release to certain people? It's on limited release, um, but it's for it's mainly for big companies or you know companies that have a, a, a large client base that want their clients to be able to design in an easier fashion. So not, not so much for um, people that, are, if you're wanting to go and design something, just jump onto canva.com. Yeah, I've really enjoyed using this. So I guess I'm curious, I mean, you've already brought this tool so far, so fast. 
what's next for Canva? What do you what do you see coming down the road um, for this this tool and and your hard work? Yeah, we we feel like we've only done one percent of what we uh, believe Canva is capable of achieving. So we're really just getting started. We've, we've just celebrated our one year birthday, and we have many many plans of what we're going to be um, unveiling shortly. In fact, we've been working on some large projects for over a year, which are all going to be launched um, in the coming months. So definitely watch this space. Is there any just I don't know, uh, advice or, or tips you can give about managing a social media strategy in a very crazy, cluttered world. What, what advice yeah. do you have for business owners? Well, I, I think my first tip has to be just get started. And I think a lot of people are really scared about their, you know, they haven't had much design experience or they haven't had much experience with design tools. Just jump online and get started. That's, that's definitely the first tip is, Jump in and you'll actually surprise yourself in how quickly you pick it up. That's the whole intention behind what Canva does. Um, and then just start to put together a content calendar. So having weekly scheduled content is so much easier than trying to create content on the fly all the time. So um, you know, creating these uh, layouts that you can then just use time and time again will really save you so much time. But it also is a really great way to build familiarity and consistency with your audience. So I think those two things, get started and then just do it consistently, create templates, um, and don't be afraid to experiment. Well, thank you, Melanie. I appreciate your time today. I'm excited to continue to show your tools to my students and, and to continue to see what's next for Canva. It's a wonderful, I bet it's beautifully elegant and simple, and I think more of more of that could be seen on the internet, and that would make me and my students very happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really appreciate you. you trying to My pleasure. Well, it's Melanie Perkins, uh, CEO and founder of Canva.com. Get in there, sign up for an account. It is an incredible tool that makes you look like a design genius.